Hello and welcome back to another CAD clip on uh, Revit structure. Um, in this lesson, kind of a two or three part on uh, crop regions, annotation crop region, and now dependent um, views. And uh, in this um, example of using the dependent view, we're going to use a floor plan. We did another one with an elevation, more of a linear type um, application to the um, dependent dependent view. So I've just got a building here and I'm just going to go to the um, sec or first floor and I'm going to have a look at that and I can see that I've got my normal crop region on there. I've got my annotation crop region. I can turn the graphics of that crop region on or off and I can activate whether the crop region is, is being used or not with my crop region button over here. Okay, so that really hasn't changed. What I want to do is I want to cut up this floor plan into four different quadrants and then plot them or drag them to whatever sheets I want. The main thing is I can maintain it and draw, continue to draw here on this main primary plan, but the quadrants that are kind of almost viewported off will be dependent on this view. So you can edit in the main view, primary view, you can edit in the dependent view. And then we can take those four views and drag them and etc. Um, to different sheets. So start with here. This we'll right click on here. We say duplicate the view, and I can say in, not duplicate or duplicate with detail. Duplicate as dependent. Okay, and it's going to create a new one in here. And I'm going to quadrant these off. I'm going to right click on here, and I'm going to rename this, and I'm going to call this, you know, NW for Northwest. And it also, when you create a dependent view, you'll notice it also makes that your current view. And it makes the box, the crop region, the size of the crop region from which you generated it. Watch how we do this. So now I'm going to take this. Remember, I've got my main one here. This is the, the one that is dependent. So I'm going to take this. Now I need to create some match lines. i got to stop for a second, even though I made that dependent view. I'm going to go to my view tab on my design bar, and I'm going to go down here and draw a match line. I'm going to go in here to settings. I'm just going to check and make sure that my I've got my match line under annotation, uh, red, and let's go to like a number 10. So it really stands out. Dash dot looks good. And now I'm going to sketch in a match line. Well, I'm going to, I know that midpoint looks good. Hit escape a couple times. Go like that. Draw another line. Okay, maybe grab midpoint of there for some reason. Click over here. Click here. Escape. Finish the sketch. There's my match lines that I'm going to use. So now I'm going to create, um, oh, th now those match lines, first of all, are in the primary and the secondary, even though I made this in the dependent view. Isn't that great? So now inside of my dependent view, I'm going to clip on it and you crop it is basically what you do. You manually take this guy and you crop it down to where those match lines are. Remember, we can use our annotation one. Have a look at that CAD clip. Now what I'm going to do to make the one over here, the northeast, I'm going to right click on here and say duplicate as dependent. Now it's going to make that. I'm going to right click. I'm going to rename that and call that, you know, NE for northeast. And now I can take that guy because I'm in the northeast one and I can drag that over. See how this is working out? Okay, so I've got a northwest, got a northeast. Now I want to do this one down here. I don't want to do this from here. If I go right click and say duplicate, it's going to make a big one like this, which is fine. But I might as well start with this one and say duplicate as dependent. Now I'm in a new one. I'm going to right click and rename that and call this southeast. And then I'm going to find that crop region. I'm going to drag it down to my match lines. There's no real way of that I can find of um, snapping to those match lines. Okay, as, as of yet, and then I can take this one, southeast, right click, repetitive uh, repetition makes perfect, and then this one is going to be, of course, called my southwest. Hit OK. Now that that's the active one, right, it's bold. Click out, hover, grab that, drag that over to my match lines. Okay, in the meantime, I can go back to my primary view, and guess what? There there 
and there and there are those primary or, or dependent views that I've created and I can go in and edit these you know from inside of here that's um, the most am amazing thing um, quite amazing uh, thing about um, these dependent views so we can go in and fine-tune these do whatever we want and then when we go in here we can draw in here or we can go and we can draw in here it's highlighted or we can draw in here it's highlighted isn't that wonderful okay take a window here right click and say create similar add some windows in there and of course you know that's going to get populated out in here which is quite nice okay and then from there we go to our sheets we right click and say new sheet make a new sheet and then we can drag our northeast and our northwest Notice the nice green uh, um, alignment, okay? Southeast, it's going to line this up. Southeast, and then my southwest. Southwest going to line up in two directions, click in place. And then again, of course, we can go in and, you know, escape, escape, and fine tune how we want our little labels to go. Okay, so then we have that on our sheet, all updating parametrically back to this primary floor plan which has its own crop region, which it can use or not use, remember. And then these super awesome dependent views that seem to be just working like a charm that work off of here and you can manage it from any one of, the, uh, of those locations. So I'm sure we can all find some really uh, excellent um, ways of using dependent views and we'll probably learn some more stuff uh, as we uh, start to use them in uh, in live projects.